So welcome to part two of everything you need to know about fibroids. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. K and I'm a GP based in North London. I make videos covering a wide variety of health topics, anything ranging from alopecia all the way to insomnia, whatever it is, you name it. But the focus and the idea behind this channel is that these are health topics that involve and affect people of color, people like you and me. So if these videos would be of interest to you, please keep watching. And not only that, please like, comment and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure to tick that bell button so that you're notified whenever I release my videos. Welcome to part two of everything you need to know about fibroids. In part one, I talked about what fibroids actually are, what causes them, what certain things increase your risks and your chances of getting fibroids, as well as the common symptoms that fibroids can cause. For those of you who haven't watched part one, you may find it a lot more helpful and this video will make a lot more sense if you watched part one first. Um, I'm going to link part one in the description box below I'll also put links either above or to the left or to the right, whichever way, but I'll make it available so you can check part one out. However, for those of us who've already watched part one, let's just move right on to part two. The next thing you might be asking is, do I need any tests? Usually your doctor will carry out an internal examination. Now don't be scared, it's part of being a woman, I'm afraid, but it's something that's relatively straightforward, just like having a smear test, doesn't take very long, and it allows your doctor to just get an idea of whether the fibroids are likely to be there. After having an internal examination, your doctor will normally refer you for an ultrasound scan. This is the same scan that women have when they're pregnant to assess the baby. We find that ultrasound scans are really good at looking at the organs inside your stomach, and it helps us to get an idea of where the fibroids are, exactly how many there are, and also rule out other things and other causes. By knowing all this information from the ultrasound scan, it'll enable your doctor to come up with the right treatment for you. Okay, so the main things I want you to bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen who may be watching this video, but this is mostly addressed to the ladies, and that is, that if you don't have any symptoms or your fibroids symptoms are not that much of a bother for you, then you may not need any treatment. Not every woman with fibroids automatically needs to have them removed or treated. Some women have barely any symptoms at all. And for them, they can manage it simply with some um, simple medicines that they can get over the counter. And that is just as valid a way of treating fibroids as a woman that goes on to have a hysterectomy. So it's not a one size fits all. Every woman will have their own unique way that depends on her wishes, the actual fibroids that she has, and any other things that her doctor thinks is relevant. From what we know about fibroids, we know that they change over the course of time. And for most women going through menopause, when those hormone levels estrogen and progesterone go down, fibroids either shrink or go away entirely. So it might be a reasonable option, especially if you're not keen on having any medication, any surgery, it's just to wait it out, especially if your symptoms are quite mild. So the point of all of this is to make it clear that your options are not fixed, they're not set in stone, and what you decide now has to be like that for the rest of your life. You can always change your mind, go back to your doctor and have your um, things reassessed again. And if treatment at that point may be more suitable, then that's fine as well. But you shouldn't let anybody force you to do something that you're not happy with or make a decision that doesn't suit you. So are we clear? Clear? Okay, so let's move on. Broadly speaking, treating fibroids is either with taking medications or having surgery. And which of these two options is the right thing to do depends on your unique situation. I'm a big believer in medications and I do think when used correctly, they can do a lot of good. 
They're used to help with the symptoms. They can help to relieve pain, help to minimize bleeding, or even cause the fibroids to shrink. However, the one things one thing that medications can't do is to cure or completely erase fibroids. It doesn't mean that they're useless in that case. And for a lot of women, especially if they're not interested in having anything major like surgery or big operation, prefer to go down using this route. There are tons of medications available and these can be anything from ibuprofen, which you can get over the counter. And that's helpful for pain, um, ranging to other things on prescription like the contraceptive pill, more specific medications that help to reduce the bleeding or shrink the fibroids. Whichever one that's suitable or that's offered to you or discussed with you depends on your unique situation. Moving on to surgery, and this can be a permanent cure for fibroids, depending on the type of surgery that you have. And there are lots of different things out there and medical science is coming up with newer and newer techniques and treatments. Ultimately, I'm not going to be able to go through everything here and nor should I. I think it, it's more relevant and more important if you go away and speak to your own doctor. The type of surgery that you'll be offered depends on one key question and that is, do you want to have children in the future? The reason I say this is because certain types of surgery, for example, having a hysterectomy, not only removes the fibroids, but removes the entire womb altogether. So if you decided a year from now, you met somebody new or you got married or whatever else, or your circumstances changed and you thought about having children, that would be nigh on impossible if you'd had a hysterectomy. If you were still open to the idea of having children or you wanted to preserve your fertility, then one of the things that would be suggested is a myomectomy. And in a myomectomy, what happens is that the surgeon goes in either through keyhole surgery or when they make an actual cut in your stomach and they actually go in and remove the actual fibroids. But the womb itself is still left in place. Only the fibroids are shelled out and taken out. The advantage of this is that you still have your womb so you can go on to get pregnant and have children and you've removed the fibroids, which is a cause of your symptoms. With anything in life, there's always risks to be aware of, things that can go wrong, things that can go right. It's up to you to balance which one is more important and which is more beneficial for you. In women who no longer wish to have children, not only can they have a hysterectomy, but another thing that's often suggested is called an endometrial ablation. Quite a lengthy word. But in this case, what happens is that whilst you're asleep under general anesthetic, the lining of the womb is lasered off. And there are lots of different methods for this. And it's helpful if the fibroids are located in the lining of the womb. Whilst preparing for this video, I ended up venturing into the murky side of the World Wide Web in order to see if there were any other cures, any other treatments, anything else that I could have possibly missed. And let's just say the results were, some of them were downright hilarious. Some of them were completely bizarre. And I just couldn't even apply any kind of logic to see how this would pro probably work. So I'm gonna share some of these results with you. Number one, true or false? hair relaxers can cause fibroids. Initially, I, I, when I read into this, it suggested that the phthalates or the phthalates, however you pronounce it, but the chemicals, these chemicals in hair relaxers are linked with fibroids. And when you look at it, it seemed to make some sort of sense. I mean, fibroids are overwhelmingly common in black women and black women, we are one of the highest groups, highest users of hair relaxers. So it seemed to go hand in hand. We use hair relaxers a lot. Hair relaxers cause fibroids. No wonder we have fibroids, right? However, when you look more into the numbers and you kind of examine this a lot more closely, it doesn't really make any sense. And that is because in the last five to 10 years, hair relaxer use in black women has, st has started to drop. 
we you know there are other things now we've had the natural hair movement we've got um, protective styling despite the fact that we use hair relaxers less and less fibroids are still very common so if one thing would cause the other it would make sense that at the same rate that we're using hair relaxers less and less fibroids would also start to drop but they're not so that to me is false number two vaginal steaming is a cure for fibroids yeah I, it's it it doesn't it i would not advise this okay it makes no sense and it's likely to disrupt your normal ph and leave you at risk of things like thrush or other um infections and i don't understand how steam is going to travel all the way up the vagina into the womb and shrink fibroids if it was that easy it just isn't so false number three is diets that are rich in red meat can increase your risk of getting fibroids and this is something that's still not proven so i'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and give this one a question mark because we know that red meat and having a diet that's high in red meat is bad for you it has a lot of saturated fats and people are more likely to be overweight or obese with um those kind of diets so i'm not going to say this one is false but red meat per se causing fibroids i still don't know number four raspberry tea is another effective cure for fibroids Again, this one to me is going to be false. Fibroids grow under estrogen and progesterone. Um, other risk factors like your weight, family, um, genetics play a part. And um, all those things are not going to be washed away by sipping on some raspberry tea. I've saved the best for last. And that is that the size of your partner and can also determine whether or not you get fibroids um yeah I, I i really this one actually made me laugh out loud yes and i just kind of spent 10 minutes after i finished laughing and picked myself off the floor scratching my head as in how is this going to work how does that work again if somebody knows how this particular reason causes fibroids then feel free to message me or comment below i'm willing to listen but again it's going to be a no so that's it guys on everything you need to know about fibroids i hope you found this video informative and if you did i'd love it if you liked and commented below not only that please feel free to subscribe to my channel and share this with others and i'll see you in my next video goodbye